This experiment immediately follows after CT1, in which you had to develop transfer function models with respect to manipulated input and disturbance variables for the system of two non-interacting tanks using open loop and closed loop step test data. The aim of this experiment is to use the transfer function models developed for tuning PI and P controllers using method of direct synthesis and using process and controller transfer functions predict the expected closed loop behavior for step change in the set point and disturbance variable. Let us now take a look at the setup that you will be using. On the top right hand corner is the power box and the controller knobs for the system. There are two pumps which pressurize water and the flow of water into the tanks is controlled by the pneumatic control valves which we will be looking at later. Next we have two flow meters which measure the flow rates for the disturbance and the manipulated variables. The flow meters are of the rotameter type and they belong to a class of meters called variable area meters which measure the flow rate by allowing the cross-sectional area the fluid travels to vary causing some measurable effect measured by the instrument. The tanks in the interacting setup are two long cylinders of 15 cm diameter and have an orifice constant of 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 each. These tanks interact through a small pipe which connects them at the base. The water flows into the tanks from the top and flows out through an opening at the bottom of the right tank. The input to the tank on the left is the manipulated variable and the input to the tank on the right is the disturbance variable. The aim of the controller is to control the height of the water in the right tank. On the top left hand corner is the Krohn IFS 4000 electromagnetic flow meter. Electromagnetic flow meters are the third most common flow meters behind differential pressure and positive displacement flow meters. A magnetic field is applied to the metering tube, which results in a potential difference proportional to the flow velocity perpendicular to the flux lines. The physical principle at work is electromagnetic induction. Under the bottom of the right tank lies the pressure sensor, which essentially measures the height of the water in the right tank and conveys the information through a 4 to 20 milliampere range signal to lab view. On the right and left side behind the flow meters are the pneumatic control valves which control the flow of water into the tanks. Control valves are valves used to control conditions such as flow, pressure, temperature and liquid level by fully or partially opening or closing in response to signals received from controllers, which in our case comes from lab view. The one on the right controls the disturbance variable flow and the one on the left the manipulated variable flow. Here you can see the screenshot of the LabVIEW interface that you will be seeing on your computer. First select the file path into which you will be saving the data values here. You can control the magnitude of the flow of water into the tanks via these arrows provided here. The height of water in the tank too can be seen plotted with respect to time and the step change can be seen in this graph. Let us now talk about the procedure to be followed when performing this experiment. Before performing this experiment, you should go through the video titled Philosophy of Process Controls and understand the importance and application of the experiment that you are performing. Now go ahead and understand the setup and the role each equipment plays and its importance. It is very crucial to realize how each equipment functions and the effects they have on the outcome of the experiment. You may be asked to explain the same by the faculty or the TAs. Next, start up the equipment and let it reach steady state. Steady state is a state at which the height of the tank reaches a steady mean value and all the instantaneous values fluctuate around it with a normal distribution. When the system reaches steady state, give a positive step change of two units from the existing value using lab view and wait for the system to reach a new steady state. Now, give a negative step change of two units and allow the system to reach a new steady state. Please note that the effect of the step changes on the instantaneous height is being saved as values in the text file you had selected at the start of the procedure. The next step in the experiment is to give a positive step change of two units to the set point which is a server problem. After the steady state is reached, now give a negative step change of two units to the set point. Your experiment is now completed. Switch off the apparatus and mail the text file with the values to yourself. Next, using the data file, try and design a P or a PI controller by fitting a first or a second order transfer function using fmincon or any other alternative function in MATLAB or Scilab and then using method of direct synthesis. Finally, simulate the experiment in MATLAB and using the controller that you have just now developed, give a positive and negative step change of two units. 
Report the results obtained in the form of graphs and compare them with the experimental results.